In this presentation, we are going to look at the negative binomial distribution. Suppose that the probability, or sorry, that the probability that an insured will produce n claims. Now, n is typically typically used for integers, so just remember that. During the next exposure period is as follows. So here we have this expression here. That is the exponential of minus lambda times lambda to the power of n over n factorial. Okay, so that's essentially the probability that the probability of n is equal to that. Now, that is the Poisson distribution. So we're going to assume it's the Poisson distribution for the time being. With where n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So I think we'll go along with the assumption that this is the Poisson distribution. Now, it actually is the Poisson distribution because the negative binomial distribution is essentially a way of characterizing the Poisson gamma mixture. So it is the Poisson distribution, but, you know, don't walk into it straight away. Just look out for traps. Furthermore, the parameter lambda, the Poisson rate parameter, varies according to a distribution with the following uh, density function. Okay. So if we're studying our material correctly, we should suspect this is the gamma distribution, okay? So G of lambda, or here uh, lambda is the parameter, equals 9.261 over 2 times lambda squared times e to the minus 2.1 lambda, where lambda is greater than 0. Okay, what is the probability that a randomly selected insured will produce more than two claims in the next exposure period. Okay, so first off, what we have to do here is check, is this the gamma distribution? So it is the gamma distribution, but I just paused the video there to write in the probability density function of the gamma distribution. So it's in red marker there. Now, so the thing is that we'd be able to sort of demonstrate that alpha minus 1 corresponds to lambda squared up here. And so we're assuming that alpha equals 3. Now what you can do there is check the gamma function of 3, and that will come out to be 2. Okay, so the gamma function of alpha will come out to be 2. Uh, likewise, we have e to the minus 2.1 lambda. So that would correspond to, now just remember, this function here is written in terms of x. So that would correspond to a beta of 2.1. Okay, so yeah. And then you can check, is beta to the power of alpha 2.1 to the power of 3? Does that correspond to 9.261? It should. Okay, so I'm happy enough that alpha is equal to 3 and beta is equal to 2.1. Okay, just check it like that. I, I, I rushed through it there very quickly. I probably could have spent more time in it. Okay, so just going back to what we said before, note that the claim frequency for an individual insured has a Poisson distribution with mean lambda. Okay, I think I said rate parameter lambda. We'll just keep it Poisson mean lambda. The given density function for the parameter lambda is out of gamma distribution with shape parameter alpha equals 3 and rate parameter equals 2.1. Again, stated explicitly, and just demonstrate it like I've done up there. So, thus the number of claims in the exposure period for a randomly selected or average insured has a negative binomial distribution. So this is the fundamental principle here. The, Gavin, the gamma, the Poisson gamma mixture can be characterized using the negative binomial distribution. Okay, so what we're interested in here, down here, is the probability of x equals some value k, okay? Uh, actually, let's just read the question here. I think it's two or more. What is the probability that a randomly selected insured will produce more than two claims? Okay. So, this is the probability of x equal k. This is the probability of the density function of the uh, negative binomial distribution. When we're characterizing it, use uh, a Poisson gamma mixture using the negative binomial distribution, we will sort of use this approach here because there are actually multiple ways of expressing the gamma uh, negative binomial distribution. So just make sure you know which one you should be using when you are using it for Poisson gamma mixtures. Here we have the binomial coefficient here. Okay, so just be careful with those. Just make sure you know how to do them before you continue. So binomial coefficients. 
Um, this is a straightforward fraction. Beta divided by 1 plus beta to the power of alpha. Okay, that should come up in each of the calculations we're about to do. So when you calculate that, just save the number. And then another fraction, 1 divided by 1 plus beta to the power of k. So that changes from each power, each value of k. k will be 1, 2, 3, and so on. Equals, equals 0 as well. So uh, that will change accordingly. Okay. So just be sure you're pretty good with binomial coefficients. So from A choose B, that is equal to A, from A choose A minus B, okay? That's very helpful for sort of simplifying things. So just as a quick example, from K plus 2 choose K, that is equal to uh, from K plus 2 choose 2, okay? And... That would, uh, that would, uh, that's just this quick example there. That can be written as k plus 2 times k plus 1 divided by 2 times 1. Okay. So I'm not going to go into binomial coefficients, particularly as they're a bit complicated in this context, but just be ready for them, okay, and just know how to work with them. So uh, probability of x equal k, that is equal to from uh, k plus 2 choose k divided by 2.1 divided by 3.1 cubed. Now that expression here is going to stay constant in this calculation. Uh, one divided by one plus uh, one divided by three point one to the power of k. We're going to use that quite a lot as well. Okay, just varying powers of k, but that fraction will come up a lot. And k plus two d divided by sorry k plus two times k plus one divided by two. Okay, so that is essentially using this one the whole way through. Okay. Uh, just actually, where did that uh, k plus 2 come from? That is the 2 is equal to alpha minus 1. Okay, which is 3 minus 1. So, k, alpha plus k minus 1, 3 plus k minus 1 is k plus 2. Okay, so it's a very straightforward one in this instance, but just to sort of remark upon that. Okay, I just paused it there just to remind ourselves what the ultimate goal is. The probability of x greater than 2. And that is equal to 1 minus the probability of x less than or equal to 2. So that's what we're going to do there. We'll calculate the probability of x less than or equal to 2 and go from there, get the complement of that. So the following calculation gives the relevant probabilities, the following calculations even. So we're going to find out the probability of x equal to 0, okay, the probability of x equal to 1, and then the probability of x equal to 2, okay. And we're going to use this formula here, okay. And just actually, sorry, just as a sort of quick remark, to show you, I put in an extra 0 there, so that's just 1 divided by 3.1, there's an extra zero just in there so just disregard that so uh, just as a quick remark we're going to use the calculate the binomial coefficients using this formula here so we've already simplified the formula already so essentially we just need k plus 2 times k plus 1 divided by 2 in the case of 0 okay that is simply going to resolve to reduce to 1 times 2.1 divided by 3.1 cubed times 1. The binomial coefficient when k is equal to 0 is 2. k plus 2 is 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 1 is 2 plus 1 divided by 2. So that just gives us 1. And also anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 1 divided by 3.1 to the power of 0 is just 1. So in this case, the probability of x equal to 0 is 2.1 divided by 3.1 cubed. And that will work out to be 0 0.3109. Okay, so that's the first job done. Now we calculate the probability of x equal to 1. So first off, the binomial coefficient. k plus 1 is k equals 1. So k plus 2 times k plus 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. Divide that by 2. So we end up with a binomial coefficient there of 3. Again, we have 2.1 divided by 3.1 cubed. Okay, so far so good. And then the last term is 1 divided by 3.1 to the power of 1. Okay, little bit of calculator work there, 
We already have one part of it done already, the 2.1 divided by 3.1 cubed. We know that to be 0 0.3109 from the last question. Anyway, the probability of x equal to 1 is 0 0.3008. And finally, the probability of x equal to 2, well, the binomial coefficient, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 1 is, sorry, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 1 is 3, divide that by 2, we get... 4 times 3 divided by 2, that gives us 6. Again, 2.1 divided by 3.1 cubed, 3.1, uh, sorry, one, 0 0.3109, okay, and then 1 divided by 3.1 squared, bit of calculator work, that should work out to be 0 0.1941. So when we add up the probabilities, we get the probability of x less than or equal to 2, and that works out to be 0 0.8058. And that means just by process of the complement, that means that the probability of x equal to 2 is 0 0.1942, which is a 19.42% chance the randomly selected insured person will have more than two claims in an exposure period. So that's it done. Straightforward enough calculation. I think we'll leave it there.